Alright guys, what's up? This is probably going to be the last episode on how to make a dialogue system with options and in this episode we're actually going to add some logic behind our buttons. Um, Alright, so let's get started. So first what we're going to do is we're going to go into our dialogue options. Um, <clears throat> should be this one right here. So go to your dialogue option script and we're going to add a public unity event but we're going to be need we're going to need to use um, unity engine dot events and then now we have access to unity events so public unity event and we'll call this um, my event and so with that we'll go back into our test dialog option over here and you see that we have this my event and we're going to be adding some events here and then we'll be passing it along to the button all right so let's get started and let us create a unity event handler so we won't be using this on click button event here um, you can either get rid of it or you can keep it there it doesn't really matter so let's create a new uh, unity event handler and for now all this is going to have is a unity event too. And we'll be using unity engine dot event. And then we're going to make a public unity event. And we'll call this one event handler. So that we know um, this is different from the ones here. Okay, so now that we have that, let's add it to all the buttons. Boom. So now all the buttons have it, and as you can see, we have a little event handler here, and we're going to make it equal to this right here. Get rid of this real quick. Alright, so... What comes next is we're going to go into our manager here, and we're going to basically need to make them equal to each other. And so the way we're going to do that is, first of all, we're also going to be using the engine dot events. I'm going to option buttons. I dot, and we want to get the info, or sorry, not the dial, the uh, we're going to be wanting to get the event handler that we just made. Um, and to do that, we're going to get component. We're going to get the handy event handler here. And let's make it equal to, to a variable. We call it unity event handler. We'll call it unity. Let's call it event handler. equal to this. I want to say it's my event handler. I want to say my event handler dot event handler is equal to dialog options dot options info i dot my event. 
And just like that, we um, set them equal to each other. And actually, we don't even need this. Let me get rid of that. And with that, this should work. First, we didn't uh, set this any to, to anything, so let's set it equal to itself real quick. It's fine for the function. And what should happen is that the first one should look the same. Yeah, see? The event handler changes right here. But right now, that still doesn't do anything. There's no logic behind it. So we're going to create a new script and call it, uh, we'll call it event behavior and it's going to derive from scriptable object and this will be where we put our logic behind the events so Let's go open up our dialog basis for convenience. I'm going to copy paste this create asset menu. And then we're going to paste it here. And let's call it new event. Menu name will be event. And then here, um, you can create a test event. I'm going to call this test event. This is where you put your logic, and let's do a debug.log um, test event successful. All right, and so with that, we're going to create a test event, and let's create it here because I'm too lazy to create another. Ah, fine, I'll create another folder. So you should create another folder called event or something, and then just create event. Um, cool. And so let's go back to our dialog options, and instead of taking this one, let's take our new event here, and let's call the test event, and we'll just do it for all of them, just to show you that it works. Okay, so now it's going to be equal to event, but when we click it, it's not going to work because we didn't make the event handler do anything. It's just going to do nothing. And so first, we're going to be using Unity Event System, or Unity Engine dot Event Systems. And then, what we're going to do is, um, we're going to be taking this iPointerDownHandler, comma, iPointerDownHandler, and then we're going to be taking this, and so just take a moment to copy that real quick, and basically what this will do is, anytime we click on it, um, an event will happen. And make sure that it's exactly, you spell this exactly the way it's spelled here, um, because that's how it gets it. See, so if I change this, it's gonna give me an error, because um, it has to be exactly on pointer down. And so, now that we have that, we can go to our event handler, and invoke it, and it'll basically invoke whatever logic is on it. And so that should be it. You see it change here. And so when I click on it, we're gonna see a debug uh, happen over here. And here, test event successful. Our buttons now do something. If we click on all of them, they all do something. And so with that, you can create logic um, 
You can create custom logic in your event behavior. You can do whatever you want here. You can put any logic here and it'll fire off. And so what you could also do is add extra events. Um, let's see, let's pick another event. And let's call this test event 02. Test event 02 was successful. Maybe create a third one even. Um, test event 03 was successful. And let's go back over here and let's make our first one have more. Test event 2, test event 3. Boom, just like that. And so we look at our button. Our button is going to have a bunch of um, events on it. We can click it, and then a bunch of things are going to fire off. And so that way you can have multiple events go off. You can do a lot with it. It's very easy to manage too. We're simply just going to close out of the options once we click on a button. Um, so in order to do that, we're going to go to our dialog manager. It should be in your scripts folder. Go to your dialog manager. You're gonna scroll down to the bottom, or wherever you wanna go, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to make a public void close um, options. Just like that. And we're going to find our dialog options UI. Copy that. Paste that here. There's set active to false. And we're going to um, call this whenever we click on the button. And we click on the button here. So I'm going to a dialog manager dot instance dot um, close options. And we're going to see if that works. And so when I click on any button, this dialog should close. And it does. Cool. And so you might be wondering, well, there's still logic on here. As you can see, there's a bunch of stuff there. Um, and so shouldn't we get rid of it? And the answer is no, we don't really have to. Um, we can create a duplicate dialog options by hitting Control D. And I'll just call this Test Option 2. And uh, let's change some stuff up like that. So we'll do something like that. Maybe this one won't even have one. And we'll add some here. And we're going to our test object. We're going to drag it. And we're going to open up a new one. And if that works, then uh, the buttons should be different. And they are. See, this one doesn't have one. This one doesn't have one. This one should have two or three and it's equal to this one. So we don't even have to get rid of them because it's going to equal a new one each time we open up the dialog options. And that's actually it. Um, you don't need anything else. So anytime you want to create a new dialog options, you just hit dialog options. Um, call it anything you want. And make question here. Know, and then you just have your button names and you just have your events here and that's it that's all you need and that's it for the series and i'll see you guys later